Hello again. In this somewhat curious position, Black has just played d4 and he has run out of moves. He is now in stalemate. Now the question is, how does White go about unstalemating him in this position? If you take a, a close look at it, you will see that if White moves anything other than the rooks, and they have to be moved to one particular square to unstalemate, then black secures a draw. So how does white deliver checkmate in six moves in this position? Which is the correct rook and which is the correct square? It's not both rooks, only one of them will do it. Well, an easy way, especially in over the board games, if you find yourself in a position like this, you probably won't. It's, it is a little bit uh, strange to say the least, I admit it. But they do test your powers of uh, solving these problems and this is no exception. Now in these sorts of positions to save a lot of time and energy and effort, all that you need to do is to look at it and think, well, unless I can force Black to capture one of my pieces, he will remain in stalemate. Now, the only pieces with which he could capture, it's this, because there's no way that you can put any piece here on the next move and get him to capture it. You just don't have a piece to do that. So, by implication, it must be one of these rooks played to g4. Which one is it? Well, let's look at the rook that it isn't and it will soon become clear why it isn't, we play here. Now like I've just said, this is forcing black to take your rook. Is it that he's taking with check that's causing the problems? Uh, yes and no, just, just carry on looking at this for a moment. What does white do here? Well if he touches that pawn it's stalemate. Because everything down here is fully covered. Black cannot move his king anywhere. So he can't touch the pawn with the rook or the king. If he plays here, he's blocking the pawn and it's stalemate. Now, if he plays here, and he has no option. Black just marches on. And he's saying to white, if you take that pawn, I'm in stalemate. And if you don't take that pawn, I'm in stalemate. Because, quite simply, if he moves, it's blocked and black has no move. And that's why the rook on g7 moving to g4 will not do. So by implication, it must be the other rook. So what is the difference with this one? Well, we play here. He takes, yeah, and white is in check. Now we just looked at the question, is it being in check that's causing the problems? Well, if you play here, black is in stalemate. And if you play here, he can march on, and we have a similar scenario as before. But if you play here, what happens now? Well, black marches on, and he's in stalemate once again. Now white comes here. Black only has this one move. And now white plays here and promotes to a queen. Now what white is as good as suggesting to black here is that Down any of these squares will be okay, discovered check and mate. So should black promote to anything other than a knight, then that's the next move for white. So to stretch it out by one more move, making it six moves instead of five, he promotes to a knight and gives check. And we just make sure that he can't check us again. So he has to move. And then like I say, we deliver checkmate down here and, and that from a position that really didn't seem to hold out much in the way of a possibility of winning this game it's been won in quite good style i would say i think you'd agree i trust that you enjoyed that one it was very interesting creating it and solving it and bringing it to you and goodbye for now